my name is Ashley and this is Faithful Rattos. Welcome or welcome back. <laughs> I hear asked and see asked a lot, oh, can anybody tell me what breed of rat my rat is? All people getting confused about the difference between fancy rats and Dumbo rats and other combinations of different words. And I'm here to tell you today, there are no breeds of rats. Yes, in nature, there are multiple species of rats. You know, you have the Norway rat, you have the brown, which is the brown rat, you have roof rats, which is the black rat, which is the plague rat. You have things like the African pouch rat, which they use to detect tuberculosis and landmines. And there's many other species of rat around the world and rat-like species. However, the rat that you have as a pet, the domesticated rat, is a Norway rat. So it is the brown rat, Rattus norvaecus is its Latin name, and it is the domesticated version of this. We have not been domesticating rats as long as other animals like dogs, cats, and even rabbits. So we haven't gotten to that point where the genetic diversity is diverse enough to classify rats that look differently as different breeds. Breeds also aren't just based on looks. Breed differences are based on temperament and role and things like that, which just isn't the case for rats. It happens with guinea pigs, rabbits, cats, dogs, even ducks, I think I've seen a video on TikTok about that. But there are no breeds of rats, but there are different varieties and rats can look very different from each other. And I'm here to talk about the very basics of the different rats. I'm gonna talk about like Dumbo and different body types. And if you like these videos, I will go into deeper description about the different colors that rats can be because that's a much more complicated topic and to understand it properly you need to have a, a little bit of knowledge about rat genetics which is not something I'm prepared to talk about on this video right now it's a little bit complex and if you aren't familiar with genetics and gene genetic inheritance it's quite complicated to understand so lots of people are are told and also think that Fancy rats and Dumbo rats are different things. Now, Dumbo rats aren't a different species, they aren't a different breed, they're just a different ear placement. Dumbo, the Dumbo gene only affects sort of the ear and the head type. It doesn't affect anything else, it doesn't affect temperament or personality. Dumbo is quite literally just a difference in ear placement and ear shape. Lots of people, especially due to misinformation from big chain pet stores and places like that mistake dumbos and fancy rats or top ear rats for being different species but they aren't and dumbos are also fancy rats the word fancy is linked etymologically to the word fancier which just means like hobbyist and so a fancier is an animal hobbyist of a specific species you could have a dog fancier or a rabbit fancier or whatever and the general sort of collective noun for a group of people or the community is the rat fancy and this is, applies to other species as well. So fancy rat merely denotes that these are the rats bred by fanciers. These are domesticated animals bred by people. That's literally all it means. So that's all that Dumbo rats are and there isn't anything else to it, but I thought to make this video a little bit more informative and a little bit longer, I could also talk about some of the different body types that do exist in rats and where this series could go if people are interested in short videos about different varieties of rats as they are called, they're not called breeds. And yeah, so we can also talk about dwarf. So dwarf rats do exist and there are, as far as I'm aware, in different places around the world, different populations that possess recessive genes that create dwarfism. Now, from what I've seen, they are different genes. Sorry, I just got distracted because a whole family of starlings just arrived on the balcony. From what I've gathered, there's multiple different genes that play a role in dwarfism in different species. Now, in the UK, I'm going to be talking in this whole series can you hear them? From a UK perspective. So I don't know what the situation is in other countries. I'm not 100% sure on the history and genetics and 
where the dwarf gene that's here in the UK, where it came from, whether it was spontaneous or whether it was imported, I, I really don't know. But here in the UK, the dwarfs that we have are about, I would say, a quarter to a third of the size of an adult rat. As adults, they're much smaller and they have a slightly different type. Their ears are bigger in comparison, their eyes are bigger in comparison, their tails are shorter in comparison, and they can look like their bodies is a little bit a little bit too short at the back, but it's not a problem. They also tend to live a little bit longer because they have less of the growth hormone, which is what makes animals age. It happens for us and also for rats. So that's why in general all animals, bigger animals, tend to not live as long if you're talking about within the species. So for example, the giant dog breeds live much shorter than the smaller dog breeds lid, so it's just to do with the growth hormone. The lesser amount of this growth hormone is thought to be the reason why dwarfs live a bit longer. They're also less likely to have tumours, again to do with this growth hormone. There are also other different like body types that I could talk about, such as a Manx rat, which is a rat without any tail. Now this, in my opinion, and in most people's opinion, is unethical to breed because not only do they use their tail for balance and being able to get around, um, temperature regulation and expressing how they feel, it's also very important physiologically in the anatomy of their body and a lot of rats who don't have tails also suffer with other sorts of deformation and things like megacolon and issues in the digestive systems bottom end you know in their anus and things like that they do struggle and have a lot of issues and aside from the fact that you're willingly breeding them to be able to less cope with heat less able to climb around and this very high occurrence of problems with the end of the digestive tract they're unethical to breed but we also have a manx rat which i would class as a different body type but it's not a body type that I think we should be breeding in rats or in any other animals. So there's that. So yeah, if there is any particular topics in this sort of bracket of like rat varieties and explaining the genetics and the science behind the different varieties, please let me know. I'd be really, really excited and happy to make those videos. I think rat genetics and rat varieties are very, very interesting. I have a couple of videos in my head. I want to talk about the acuity gene. I want to talk about shaded and specifically pointed varieties and what happens with that. I want to talk about how we classify varieties in the UK versus other countries and how this affects showing standards because a lot of how we talk about varieties is impacted by showing standards and all of that sort of stuff. So I think it could be a very interesting series if people are interested in it. I'm going to post this video and see if people like it. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a little Ezio here, giving himself a little scratch. 10 points to anyone who tell me what variety is from this angle, because this is really not a good... <laughs> it's really not the best um, division of him. Anyway, if you have any questions about Dumbo versus Fancy or the body types of rats, let me know. I will answer them in the comments down below. And yeah, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!